Okay, it is 2.02, and I'd like to call the September 18th, 2023 meeting of the Hadley Capital Planning Committee meeting to order. And I see that we do have a quorum, so we are able to conduct business. And uh, today's meeting, the purpose is to have further uh, committee discussions on all the proposals for uh, fiscal year 24 and hopefully take votes on them too. So I was wondering if, uh, Linda, do you have anything further you would like to add before we get into the details? Um, the uh, the overview, I think, um, especially for those that weren't a part of it last year, is in, last fall we had an extremely large um, capital budget, um, which unusually large. And a lot, of, a lot of the justification was for that because we needed to get things ordered, um, and they had to they had to get online and ordered, uh, even though we might have to wait a few years and borrow at a later point. And um, I was looking uh, at it again this morning. We had um, not counting the fields, we had 1.8 million dollars in borrowing, whether from general fund or water or sewer. And then adding in the fields, uh, which came from CPA, and half of that was going to be uh, borrowed, half of that and another $750,000. Uh, um, so we were, um, so though that was all borrowing that was, uh, none of that was debt exclusion overrides. Those were all to be paid out of the debt and exclusion budget that we pass at um, town meeting each year. So some was to come out of the general fund, some was to come out of water, fund, some was to come out of the uh, sewer fund. We really, um, we really pushed our limits on that. Uh, and uh, just as we said, uh, not all of the borrowing has happened. Quite a bit just happened this past week. We just had a $1.8 million ban last week and um, that we got the money in for to cover much of this. And there's still a bit more to go. We'll borrow in the spring. So that's all uh, to be paid within the budget, and it was pretty tight. So we're very, I'm glad with this year's 24 budget, uh, the 24 capital budget, that we don't have that kind of borrowing at, at all. We're not doing borrowing. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, too, is that the, um, the interest rate was just under five. Uh, under, we, had, we had some bids over five, and I think it was, oh, Paul, is it 4.85 or four? Was, I think it was 4.85 or 4.8%. 4 I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was the latest ban. Now, when I first, when we first started borrowing, we are, actually the first ban was under 1%. So the borrowing has become less attractive than it was. And so the difference between borrowing and just paying it right out with uh, from what we have in free cash is a little bit... Um, little bit different dynamic going on there now. So this year's borrowing, um, even though as you look at that, it's a much, much larger borrowing because we're looking at some pretty large multi-million dollar projects. And um, these are not paid within our current revenues. That's why we go to a debt exclusion override. We go to the ballot, people vote yes or no, whether they want their taxes increased to in order to make the payments on these borrowings. So that's the difference between borrowing within the levy, which is paid out of the operational budget, and then borrowing subject to debt exclusion, which is the taxes just go up to cover those payments. You'll still, you'll still see it in the budget, but it's not squeezing any other budgets aside. It's not when there's nothing else we have to do to make room for it because that revenue just to make those payments just comes in on the top uh, and, uh, and we, we pay it each year. So, um, so your job is as or your, your role as a uh, capital planning committee um, is, a, is a little bit different when we're looking at, uh, at debt exclusions. So in order, another re way that we're avoiding, and, and we didn't do the exclusions just to avoid doing the borrowing within the levy, that these happen to be large projects that we would never be able to fit. We got a uh, three million, two million, and one million. We never would be able to fit those in within the um, within the general within the uh, usual debt and interest amounts in our regular budget. So then, when the choice came down to, well, should we borrow for this sixty thousand, for that twenty thousand, for that hundred thousand dollars, because we had a, a large, uh, uh, we had another surplus at the end of twenty three. 
I'm suggesting we go right ahead and spend that in out of free cash so that we don't have to borrow. We're just going to clear that right out of the picture um, with the free cash as we need it. And we won't be doing the, the borrowing. It didn't make that much of a difference a few years ago. We may as well throw it into borrowing because the interest rate was so low. But between the interest rates going up and the fact that we have the free cash, that's the recommendation for the smaller items. And um, that's uh, that's about it, Paul. I just think it's helpful to 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 know where this money is coming from as you're as a, you're making your call. I mean, obviously for the for the budget reason, it makes no uh, it makes no difference if these are debt exclusions. But you as uh, as you've got a different role with your you know between you and the taxpayers of making decisions as to when and and how much we raise the taxes for to cover that level of borrowing. So so there you are. Nice. Any yeah. questions? On some of those larger ones, too, it looks like in your notes section, you put down, you probably won't be borrowing until FY25. So we're looking at two years down the road. We are. And and Dan sent all of you um, uh, the impact. You would ask that last, last meeting. Yep. Thank you, Dan. A nice job, too. Really, this really helps. I really appreciate having this. So is there anything anything you'd like to see on the screen that would be helpful or you uh, I mean you all have this in front of you just want to launch into discussions? Why don't we you know Linda if you could put I can show you the FY capital request on the screen. The you want to see that? Okay. Then we can just go right down the list. Okay. I was thinking maybe we could go down the list and if no one has any strong objections then maybe at the end if they don't we could just take one vote to cover all the proposals. And that's assuming there's no strong objections to that method. Is everyone on the committee okay with that? David and Bill? I just, I had one question on the DPW, um, the OPM funding. Is, I think we talked about the fact that this covers some of the build, build phase as well as the design phase. There you go. Well, we don't have, do we have a rep? Uh, Jim was on last week. Or Scott, could you uh, chip in on this? I was grabbing a paper off the printer. Can you repeat the question? And also, uh, David, even before the question, why don't we go down the list and then when we hit that, you could, because that's a question more on the details of the uh, actual request rather than the methodology of approving you know, that's what i was asking is are are the other two committee members okay with us just going down in sequential order as linda has presented it to yeah. us fine okay so why don't we just start off but that's a great question david but let's hit it when we're discussing that particular request so the first item is the computer aided uh, emd dispatch protocol the sixty thousand dollars does anyone on the committee or anyone in attendance have any further comments or questions or objections so i, I just wanted to add um i know you can see it there in the notes but there's a grant uh that the state 901 department um covers and I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna qualify for it, but it's very likely we will. And so if that is the case, we would not need to have that capital request in there. Okay, well, thank you. And I think we did discuss that last week too, like this is a plan B, just in case the grant doesn't come through. Right. But the likelihood is, seems very probable that it will come through. Oh, the very first one. That's what we believe, yes. Yeah. Good. And, and if it comes to that, Megan, we would, um, because town meeting is October 26, I think, it's we're still like six weeks away. If the grant has come in by then, we won't even vote on it at town meeting. If the grant hasn't been approved yet, we'll vote on this. And I would suggest we make this conditional. But, but if the grant doesn't come through, um, this is a question for you, Megan. Are we still going to, or and Mitch is on too, I see. 
Are you still going to want this out of free? You're, this, you still want this, right? Yes, we do. We're so it doesn't need to, to be conditional. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we'll just put it on to come out of free cash and then either pull it or not pull it. So okay. when it comes in early enough, it's not even going to show up at town meeting. Right. Okay. Fine. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on then to the second one, the Algonquin project. Carolyn, have uh, this, you discussed this anymore with the selectmen regarding the ARPA funds? That's on the agenda for Wednesday. For Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. So right. I would suggest this one. I Please. didn't put it over in free cash, but I, I sh just in case the select board, I, I, I don't know, Carolyn, do you think we should have it voted out of free cash? If they choose not to support yeah, we, it? We still have to do it. Is that right? That project, yes. I mean, we're definitely still trying to um, have those conversations with um, our local legislators, but it's we won't have an answer by town meeting. That's the problem. Or I'm concerned we wouldn't have an answer by in time for the when we have to complete the project. So I, I wouldn't lean on that. Um, if you're, I, I would say it's very much in line with what the select board has approved. Um, but if we were ha going to have to, the, you're, are you asking whether to use free cash or borrow for that? Yeah. I would say, well, I say we would do it out of free cash. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, similar to the, the one above it, We'll just pull it if the uh, select board, and, and then we will we'll know that in a, in three days. Yeah, because the select board will um, will discuss that this week. So I think in the meantime, to be safe, we should vote it out of free cash so that we have approval for this project. And not ARPA money. If we don't get, if we're not, uh, if they don't authorize use of the ARPA, I, I don't, again, I don't know why, but Carolyn and I, we just can't speak for the select board and they may have other questions that we haven't yeah. thought of. Um, so we would want it out of free cash. Is it, um, uh, I know it's after our meeting, we'll make a decision, but Carolyn, could you just notify the Capital Planning Committee of the selectmen's course mm -hmm. of action after that occurs? Yep. Excellent, thank you. So if, if on what you have in front of you, would you'd put 100000 in the free cash. I'm doing it on my spreadsheet, and I can share that. I don't know if I can – can I share this? Uh, let me try a new share. That gets slid over from other funding to free cash is what you're saying. Yeah, it worked. It did work? Okay. Perfect. I'm going to move that over. If I if I move screens, yeah, it worked perfect. Okay, you that that works. That you've got the hundred thousand in the free cash. Okay, nothing happened there. I'm just, just getting on. I'm just getting the columns only at like a one inch wide. Is everyone else seeing that too? Same thing. Yeah, same thing. I don't know what you did, Linda. Just we lost. Oh, you like the, it worked better over there. There we go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So on my other monitor. Okay, I'll just you'll see the you'll see a lot of the the side of my head then. <laughs> and this entire request is also subject to you know, possibly the legislators may be able to get DPW to sort of uh, rethink this. You know, as on the Algonquin. Yes. Um. It's a, it's a bit of a, uh, I, oh, that's for Carolyn, I guess. What's your question, Paul? Is it, it to rethink? Well, I thought last week we were talking about having the uh, state legislators get involved and see if they approach DEP about, you know, rethinking this whole thing, because if they were to back off, what if we were to spend this money? Like Scott was talking about this last week, and then right. said, you really didn't have to do it, and then you know, we, we took and spent money that we didn't have to spend. Yeah, Paul, my concern is uh, with DEP deadline, I don't know that they would sort it out in time. Um, we are, we've already had initial contact with the legislators, but we have not had an actual meeting about it. So I guess my, I just have a concern about the timeline. Um, 
and they were adamant DEP when we met with them and the engineers uh, that just because we're a municipality doesn't mean we don't have to pay it. But it's we certainly want to do our due diligence and make sure and continue to follow up with um, Senator Comerford and Representative Kerry. Um, I think we just need to have something uh, set at least set aside or earmarked for it. Um, just in all my years and working with the state and hoping that they can help advocate is it's a slow process and I am concerned about the timeline. Okay, so just out of curiosity, what is the deadline? Scott, isn't it? It's pretty, we've been on a very tight deadline um, We've uh, with all of the engineers and our uh, legal. So Scott, do you know what that, I, I just don't have the paperwork in front of me, but it was, it, we've been having to ask for an extension because we had to wait for uh, approval for funding. Um, we were originally saying that we had to wait for the special town meeting. So they, the deadlines were pushed back a little, pushed um, ahead a little bit for us. Correct. So, they, Scott, just gave, they just actually gave us another one. Uh, I forgot the date. I have to look it up. But a couple of weeks ago, they just granted us another extension because uh, we still we still don't have the uh, the funding in place. In, any idea? So it's like the, the uh, it is. It's like they give you like a th every th three months you have to apply for an extension. We just did again, and it was granted. Yes. They uh, the DEP knows we're waiting on. You know, or originally we were waiting on town meeting in October. So, and then the next extension will probably be by the time this goes out to bid and et cetera, uh, you probably won't be able to work because of winter conditions. And we'll have to file for another extension to uh, get us into next year. Okay. So, an explanation of the ARPA part of it. You know, we got about one and a half million dollars worth in, in in ARPA funding, and about a little over, over something over a million went to fund our budgets for two years because we had reduced um, income because local mail, seal, uh, meals and rooms taxes went down so much. Um, so we used a lot of it for the for, the, um, for our budget, um, and then. Um, the rest of it pretty much went to construction projects very much like this that they were they were uh, dealt with um, uh, most of them were were water or highway projects that needed to be done um, because they really benefited everybody in town um, especially a number of projects that were along route nine so that's why we're kind of comfortable that this use of it now the reason there is a hundred thousand is because the other projects didn't get fully used up the, the, the other projects are completed, and this is the balance we have in the funds. Um, it also includes 50000 of it that we didn't uh, for the DPW trailers, and we, we got other funding for that, so we did not need to use the ARPA funds, um, this source of ARPA funds for the trailers. So that's why we have $100,000, and that's why that amount of money has been allocated out of ARPA funds yet. So this would be the, the final uh, payment out of ARPA. And it just happens to fit very nicely with the dollar amount that we need for this project. So we're hoping um, we will be speaking to select board this Wednesday night about use of the funds for this purpose. Okay, great. Thanks for all the comments, everyone. Anyone else have anything to add? Okay, now we're gonna move on to the $3 million DPW preliminary cost request. So David, uh, you have the floor if you wanna ask your question now. Sure, so um, I looked at the spreadsheet that Linda sent out as far as the impact to the, to the uh, amount of taxes that people were paying based off of each item. And I, I know we talked a little bit about last uh, this last time that the $3 million uh, most likely contained funding for the OPM during the build phase as well as the design phase. And so my my fear here is that if we have an ask for all of it, that we may not get any of it. 
as to move forward with the design phase and, you know, working toward the possible grants or state funding or whatever. So is there a way, Scott, that we could ask for the amount that would cover the design phase for the OPM and get the plans drawn up and the architect and all that? And then once we have a total dollar amount, make the build phase for the OPM, you know, include that dollar amount in the in the ask at that time for the building of the DPW. And the reason, you know, there is a possibility that if, and I'm not saying I'm against the DPW by any means, but there is a possibility that this $3 million gets approved. Uh, people are frustrated when it comes to the next debt exclusion to actually fund the building of the building. And then that gets shot down and we have this money just kind of sitting off to the side. And I, I feel if we could go in an incremental approach a little bit more and for a smaller ask to move towards our ultimate goal of designing and building the DPW, that might be a little bit more tolerable to the voters at town meeting in the at the ballot box. Yeah, I just tried calling him, David, to see if I could get an answer on that. He didn't answer, but I, I can try to get that uh, as soon as I can and get back to you on that i i don't know the answer for that david can i can i can you clarify your question i might be able to answer it um what yeah. i think you're asking is do you have to, oops, do you have to have the opm during the design phase is that what you're asking no i'm, I'm more asking of, of what portion of this three million dollars is strictly for the design phase and could we so, so it's two and a half million is for the design one million is for the opm is that two and a half million, Carolyn? That's two and a two. half million is the design. Two and a half million is the design. One million is for the OPM. That would be three and a half million. Yeah, and, and that seems insane for a de design phase. Two and a half million dollars just for the, the design phase of a building. Yeah, I'm probably re reading my notes wrong, but the OPM. That would be... I Five hundred thousand dollars more than what's being requested. Yeah, I know. I'm, I I must have written my notes wrong. Sorry. And um, just for, based on the <laughs> the library senior center, those projects, I could see the design phase being five hundred thousand reasonably, and the rest being the actual build phase for for the OPM and managing the project. So, what I was getting at, let's just say it is five five hundred thousand for the design phase. If we were to go to town meeting and ask for five hundred thousand. I think we have a much better chance of getting that approved by the voters than asking for three million that may or may not be used for a project. So public procurement, you can't move forward with the design uh, without securing an OPM. And it's based on the total cost of the project. And David, I think, are you saying you want to, actually what you're asking is you want to have it carved out, right? What part of the OPM pertains to the design phase and what part pertains to the actual construction? Is that the way I'm hearing you? Basically what I'm, I'd like to bring to town meeting would be the funding just to cover the design phase rather than the design and build phase. So I don't know if we could hire an OPM for just the design phase at this point, along with the architect. That that's what I'm asking because obviously the build phase is much more expensive and much more long term. So the OPM is half a million, correct? Yeah, I don't know more than that. Yeah. Let's get. We can get those questions for you, David. Get that clarification. Those are those are really good questions that will want to that the public will want to know. Yeah. Okay. I think so too. Yeah, no, another concern I have about this one is, you know, I, I, first of all, I am in favor of a new DPW building, but what I'm thinking is if we go ahead and we went ahead with this $3 million, we got the, the plans ready to roll and the voters say no, and it's done and over, we're not going to get a DPW building because the voters don't want it. And we just spent $3 million for not. I don't know if I'm, if all of you see it the same way I am. I'd like to know about this legislation too. Like, is there more, can we get a more? Well, Linda, if. answer as to when 
and if it's even going to be passed. We don't know it. yet. We don't, we, that's, it's, we won't know if it's, when it's, when it will pass, when and if it will pass, Paul, that's the, that's the challenge. That's the risk. And if it doesn't, what's the chances of $30 million DPW project going through in this town that's going to add you know, at least 20% to our tax rate in one year? Linda, correct me if I'm wrong. If, if we authorize the $3 million, we would not actually see the impact to the tax rate until we borrow the money or spend the money, correct? So Actually, a, y a year after it, because we borrow it and you make the first payment a year after that. So it might be two years from now. Okay. So we, if we went with the $3 million, we would not necessarily be paying on that $3 million unless until it was spent a year after it was actually borrowed and spent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Paul, I think... I, I agree with you. You have a big chunk of money that's set aside there. But if we were to approve the three million until it's actually spent, we wouldn't actually be paying on that three million. It wouldn't be gone, so to speak. That's correct. Well, I guess I'd hate to see the sequence of events occur in which you know we already spent the money and we're still there's a legislative proposal that's still pending. We don't know which way that's gonna go. And there's a good chance that could seal the fate one way or the other of this project in the town of Hatton. Right. Yep. And I think it'd be much more digestible, the taxpayers, if there were some assurance that we're gonna get some state funding, just like we do for the uh, school projects through SBA. If we're on, on our own for 100% of this, you know, I don't know, I haven't engaged what the people are thinking but it's it's a very huge amount for a town of this size mm -hmm. hey, so paul uh just just as a clarification if that if that were to go through and it went into place it's um very comp com um, very competitive it also um you can't they won't give it to you if you haven't done your done some preliminary work correct but we so we like couldn't even apply for it. This isn't going to be borrowed for two years anyway. Maybe by then we'll know whether or not the, the legislation passes. At least we got that to hang our hat on. Is uh, Dan on? I know I know Bill's sitting in his office, but is Dan there as well? <laughs> yep, I'm here. Hey, Dan, uh, what's the current average home value? What did it rise up to? Uh, last year is 418000 Okay, so the figure for the nine hundred and sixty-eight dollar increase that would be on a four hundred eighteen thousand dollar. Yes. Okay. Okay. And okay. Well, if this is going to happen in two years, I would think you'd have some answer from the legislators as to whether or not this is going to go through within two years. So maybe this part of it would be fine because we, we're not going to commit. But yes, we would, though, in a way, right? Because if this passes, we're going to get rolling on this fairly quickly. The design of it, yes. I, I guess one so other question. I'll... Go ahead, David. Uh so well, let's just say we vote the entire dollar amount and we contract with the OPM, the architect, to do the design phase. And then let's say we get it all designed. It goes to town meeting for the, the full $30 million. And we say, nope, we're not going to do it. Are we then having to pay the OPM for some of his services that we were for which he was contracted if we don't actually go forward and build the building? That's my other concern. Because obviously then, he'd be yeah, doing. The yeah, the design we would. I don't know if the uh, how. I, I guess I, I guess I don't know. Is the OPM connected with the design, or is the uh, Carolyn? Oh, so so it's designed first, and then the OPM comes on. No, no. During, throughout the design process, the OPM. That's why they're on so early in the, okay. in the process. So they would have already done their work. So we no. would all. They work together once the you would do you would go out to bid at the same time you would do um, requests for proposals for both. 
They're two separate entities. But you, the, you're, the OPM technically is there to, to advocate for the town and make sure everything's being done to protect the town. So they start from the very beginning overseeing um, the, the design work as well. So would the contract be written up in such a way as to address David's concerns so that we're not paying him for something that we're never going to receive just for the design portion of it? Is that correct? Yeah. So I, I these questions, we definitely want to get information from Weston and Sampson. Um, and I, I'm, I, I don't want to try to answer those without their input, but I, we can get those questions. And my major answered. concern is I, I hate to see us spend $3 million of taxpayer money and get absolutely nothing for it if the project is voted down. Yeah, it's one of those catch 22s, Paul, unfortunately. Um, you can't move forward without the design, but you do take a risk that the town's gonna say no, but you can't ever move forward without it. However, I agree with you totally, Carolyn. I get I get what you're saying. However, I just think we got a much better chance of getting the voters to say yes, if we got some legislation to back us up with as far as the partnering with us for funding which we can't get we can't even apply to it unless we have a design does that make sense so we can't like all the other, all of the grants that we try to apply to as well uh, the state does not want to fund something if the town has not put the initial preparation in to give them an estimated cost that's a valid and is done by designers and architects. Absolutely. So, so we can't, we can't even, even if that money was available, we still have to take the risk. And I, I that's the only word I can use is the risk of um, having a town support, having the design done so that we can either, if that money does, be, if that legislation passes and they go into uh, a, pro a grant program where they're going to fund communities, the communities have a, that have already had the design phase done and that and the accurate estimate of the cost is going to is going to be able to get that funding. That is my understanding how it's been explained. So you'd which be is is typical what you do with any any other municipal um, construction when you're getting grants or support from the state. So if I'm hearing you correctly, Carolyn, you're saying if we are, you know, quote unquote, first in line, we're going to stand a better chance of getting funding rather than waiting on this, waiting until the legislation, assuming it passes, and then start going ahead with the design. After we my, my understanding is they're not going to even look at an application unless the design phase has been done. But I'm talking about the legislation now, not looking at, you know, after it's been part of the legislation funding. You know, I, they won't look at the applications because, well, if this doesn't pass, they're not going to look at any applications. It's just not going to happen. But if it passes, then should we start going ahead with a design? You we... could, you're still taking, you're going to be, still be taking a similar risk because you're, it's a competitive grant. So, so first step legislation, this municipal bill passes and uh, that money's available. My understanding, it's going to be similar to other programs where the town has to have a design done by architects to show um, that they're, what, what the actual costs are going to be, not a, not a guesstimate. So in order to even have, once this bill's in place, to be able to meet the criteria for the grant funding, you have to have a completed design, architectural design of the building with accurate costs. But do you have to have it in place before the law is even decided on? Because that's my point. Or do we wait until the law is either voted up or down and then go ahead? When we, we don't have a guarantee, even at that point, like you said, it's a very competitive process, but at least we have a much better chance of getting funding than a 0% chance yeah. without this. 
Paul, mm. can I add in there's another factor here for us to wanting to get going on the earlier side, and that is the increase in uh, the costs for putting up buildings. This DPW building alone is twice the cost of the other three buildings we put up five years ago. We only spent 15,000 on those three buildings, 14,000 something, spending on, on the town's share anyways. And this is going to cost 30, hopefully less than that if we get the grants. So as in, in talking with, some of us talking with committee members, we're seeing if you wait another year for this $3 million, you might be looking at three and a half million or, or the, the building might be 35 million. What we are, they were, we're trying to stay ahead of a rising curve if possible. But I certainly am hearing that, um, that this committee and, and anyone voting on it in the town is going to want to know, is that really, is this the minimal? Is this, is this the least, is, is there some smaller figure that we can do? The process is exactly what we did with the other ones. It just happened to be a lot lower dollars. The town was spending 50, $100,000 before we could move ahead with the next phase. We put in some initial money. This is a lot more and the building cost is a lot more. So, um, but I think getting those questions really nailed down um, is at, at this point, it certainly can't help. I can't hurt and it can only help because it's gonna be the same questions asked on the floor at town meeting. So we mm -hmm. should have, have it all settled first. I think that's a valid point about the uh, rising cost. Most certainly, thanks for bringing that up. Again, I just hate to see us spend $3 million and we have nothing to show for it. You know, with the other, with the fire truck and the lockers, we're going to actually have something for it. But with this, we don't even know if we're going to get anything out of this at all. Do we want to do another meeting to revisit the deep, this, this particular article? I think it might not to have another just about this because David has some questions too that haven't been answered and they can't until okay and it, it why don't we try and set something up we know this works let's see if we can get Jim here and anyone else that he wants to bring in maybe he'd even want to bring one of his consultants in Carolyn maybe that uh to well I think the other one's more mechanical too you know what David's asking is well the OPM's cost include the construction side of it or just the planning side. And am I wording that properly, David? Yeah, that that pretty much, yeah. I, I'd just like a cost for strictly the design phase and what the cost is for the build phase. And then like Carolyn said, I, I get it that we have to have an OPM retained for, you know, uh, for procurement. But do we have to start dishing out money to the OPM if we never end up making it to the build phase? Hmm. Okay, any other questions or comments? So why don't we defer on this one until we have a, a third meeting? Is everyone okay with that? Sounds good. Bill? Yeah, it depends on what date we choose. That okay. sounds logical, yes. All right. Well, this why time seems to, if we do next next week, same time, uh, as long as we can get um, some committee members, uh, uh, building committee members on, we'll try for next Monday or two. Sure, that'll work for me. Everyone else? Okay. Okay, we'll get an email out. Okay, let's uh, defer on that and we'll move on to the ladder truck. Any questions or comments? Anybody? And this is, we're talking several years down the road for this, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, I think he said three. At least, if my memory yeah. is right. There might, might be some level of down payment required at, at some point. That's what did happen with us last time. If we made a down payment at an earlier phase, uh, it, uh, they reduced the total cost. So we have to visit that when the time comes. But the way it stands now is uh, they place the order. It would come in in three years, and then we'd borrow the money. So we'd pay it the fourth year. So um, once again, we get this going now, and we uh, we will use today's costs as opposed to waiting another year and probably have it go up. This has gone up since he made the request a year ago. What else? So, I hate to keep being that guy, but I've got a question on the on the ladder truck as well. Um, so I looked it up. Northampton doesn't have two ladder trucks. They have one, and they're a much bigger city slash town than we are. Uh, many more higher high rate, well, many more buildings with more stories than we have here in town. And so the question I had was, why are, why is the plan to bring the new ladder truck online and then keep the second ladder truck and move it to North Station if we don't necessarily have a need for it? And I, again, I think that's going to be something that's going to come up at town meeting where the voters are going to say, why do we need two multi-million dollar ladder trucks when a much larger city only has one? And so if we were able to at least present the option that that other ladder truck will be sold once the new one comes online, again, it's a much easier sell to people. And as far as I know, no town, even two, three, four times our size has more than one ladder truck in the area. We don't have a rep from the uh, fire department on today. We, Carolyn, do we want to get him on the phone? Yeah, I'm texting him now. He has a new hire that he was um, okay. with, so let me, uh, I'll see if I can reach him. But carry on, because it'll maybe oh, take oh, you a minute yeah. to get him. While well, Carolyn's doing that, why don't we uh, move How on? How about the town hall one, Jennifer? I, I think Jennifer's on, uh, Paul. That, that should be relatively quick. Okay. The computers? The IT? Yes. Okay, Jennifer. Hi. Yes, it, it is very quick. Um, so we need to replace our server. Uh, this is something that needs to be done about every seven years, five to seven years. We were able to extend the warranty and the service on the one we currently had to get us out to seven years. Um, but going after that, it comes sort of outdated and they quit being as efficient and of space on it. Uh, the server connects the entire town. Fiber optics in place, it literally will get the PP and everybody will be on the same one. We might be looking at actually trying to squeeze two of them out. We don't know yet. Um, this is just something we have to have. And then um, they're also doing uh, computers for the town. Oh. Can y'all hear me? I was breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up a lot. Is this better? I, I got it because I knew what you were saying, but I, I can understand where it was breaking up a bit. I'm going to turn my camera off and see if that's any better. Is this better? Or you, yes. you want to come sit with me? No, it's not better with the camera off? It's better. That is, that is better. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, you just don't get to see me smile at you while I ask you for money then. Um, I said that the server is, the current server is seven years old. This is something that has to be upgraded every five to seven years. We were able to extend this one out to the furthest time possible with warranties and um, things like that. But we are running out of space um, on this server. So it is time for an upgrade. Uh, this is something we have to do just on the regular basis as part of good IT management. Um, so this is to purchase, install, put all the new programs on, and um, also a um, also some computer software and technology stuff that goes with it. But this is this is standard operating and equipment that sort of is needed for the town. Does anybody have any questions? Not really. I don't. Anyone else have questions? 
So Linda, that other 20,000, that'll be in the future that's going to be put into the operating budget. It, it, we're going to put in the operating budget again because we have the free cash now. This and uh, this would be the same principle that when we get to the police car, which we also could have done quickly, I'm sure. But um, yes, so if we move that uh, the cruiser back into the budget and if we move the uh, regular computers, not the server, and then we won't have that level of requests being made in uh, account in the capital budget anymore. They'll just be absorbed within a budget because we know they have to be purchased every year. Are you moving it in for this year or that'll be for this is the last year that it will be out separate? Then it's getting moved in for next year, just for clarification. Oh, uh, be, there will be amendments to the 24 budget at the same town meeting. So rather than have it a capital, I'm, we're asking for the increases in this year's uh, operational budget. So it would, be, it would be for FY24. Okay, thank you. And I promise we're not buying super fancy, just just good, fast equipment to make sure everybody can be as efficient as possible. She's tough. <laughs> I am. I'm really mean. <laughs> okay. I shepherd y'all in a great way. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Why don't we uh, move on to the uh, locker Mike. room? Mike's back. Oh, oh, yeah. Mike's on. Oh, Mike is on? Hello. Hi, Mike. Okay, uh, David had some questions, and uh, maybe you could help answer it for our committee. Yeah, so I have Brian here too, our mechanic. So if there's anything, I got okay. him here with me. Go ahead, David. Sorry, I couldn't get it unmuted. Hey, Chief. Hi. So um, my understanding is that uh, even Northampton does not have two ladder trucks currently, and I, I get my understanding for this plan. And with a new ladder truck would be that obviously it's a couple years out. Uh, we get the new ladder truck in. We're keeping the old ladder truck to move to North Station. And my question is, why? If it is not up to certification standards that we need a new one, why are we hanging on to it rather than reselling it and recouping some of that money, even if it is just a you know couple hundred thousand dollars or a few hundred thousand dollars? Why do we need two for a town our size? Well, a, a little bit, a little bit different. Uh, Northampton's ladder truck is a platform, and then they have a new quint as well, and that's what we have. So our quint is not only a ladder; it's also a pumper. So basically, what we're looking to do, because engine one, which is now it's a two thousand engine, um, what we're looking to do is have it refurbed. So. Basically, it would have its certifications for most likely another 10 years. So they would go through it, change hoses, make sure the, the framing is okay. Uh, basically, go through it top to bottom. Uh, that truck is a pumper with a ladder on it. So it would provide increased service to the north end of town. Uh, and then the new ladder truck would be run out of here, which is also a quint. So not a platform ladder, not, a, not just a straight ladder like Northampton's running. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to move the truck down the road that we've had the most problems with, with, uh, switching it into pump, which is the 2006 Seagraves that's in North station right now. Um, and that's the only truck that we would actually be able to see a return on. If we were to trade that in our ladder truck, as it stands right now, we basically would probably be putting it into auction. We would not be getting any funding back on that. I don't know if that did that answer. Did that sound good? <laughs> David, are you satisfied? Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. So if that goes into auction, uh, what do you think you're getting off of that? I know it's a hard question to ask, but I, I mean, we got lucky with the Pierce. I think what do we got five grand for it? We got for our 1987 Pierce Arrow. We got. 5,000, I think, for it. And that was from a collector. Um, again, we're, we would have a better chance of bringing money in by, we're not keeping all the trucks. We would be, our engine three would be the one that would be traded in because that one actually might still have some value to it. Um, it's just, we think it's all of us, you know, all of our officers meeting. Uh, we feel it's, you know, it's critical if we can keep a pumper with a ladder on it. Um, 
for, for this area with how often our truck's going out to Northampton. Uh, they've been waiting for their new straight ladder, so no pump, no nothing on it, just a straight ladder. Uh, they've been waiting for, what, two years now? It's three plus years they've been waiting for that. And so we're first due to their calls because their current platform, they've been having issues with it. Like just, it won't go up. It just stops. Um, so the, the 2000 that we have right now, it's just such solid, it's solid state. It doesn't have all the multiplexing in it with electronics. Uh, Brian has been, you know, he's kept, obviously he's keeping all the trucks up really well, but you know, just, it seems like the best, best case scenario for us to have that. Um, and it would push off having to make the request for engine three, which is that Seagrays pumper it would push that back. So we were hoping we would, we were hoping that that would be a better option. Okay, great. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for the chief or any comments? Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, do you want to let's move on to the locker rooms at Hopkins? Chris, Ann? Okay, but I'm not sure if folks had any questions. I know Chris presented previously. I do want to let folks know that um, I am now listening. I realize that this is probably not the issue that I was afraid it might be. The school committee will discuss on September 26th um, if making sure or if they want to make sure that any timing around renovating the locker rooms also coincides with any upgrades they might be doing to HVAC, which you're looking at right now. But Linda, based on what you just said a moment ago around some of these things about that the town doesn't incur any, it doesn't affect taxes until the borrowing actually occurs and there's a first payment on the borrowing. Mm -hmm. That um, And given the fact that uh, the town, for understandable reasons, doesn't have a voracious appetite to ask people to go into debt exclusion and increase property taxes frequently, I want to avoid doing that. Probably well, doesn't make sense to just ask the taxpayers, will they support this project with the understanding that of course, it isn't until um, the project is, the borrowing has occurred and the project's underway that the taxpayer would see any impact. And what we'll be talking about with the school committee on the 26th, as I said, just making sure that any building renovation projects that we're doing are, um, are integrated, that we're also thinking about any HVAC upgrades that we're doing. What we want to make sure that we avoid doing at all costs is um, renovating something and then having to turn around and make modifications to that renovation because we've made, um, we've upgraded uh, our HVAC and energy systems. But I don't know if folks have any additional questions. I know Chris went through the presentation last time. Well, Linda, we're not going to see this hit until 26 because it's going to be a two year. The borrowing won't even occur until two years out. Well, um, that's what we were talking the last meeting. Uh, Chris, we're trying to say, is it going to begin in FY24 or into FY25? Because that's really what affects what the first time we have to borrow is uh, the September after the close of the fiscal year in which the, the spendings occur. So um, I don't know how much might be spent by the end of June. If this is a project that you're planning to do over next summer, there will be some spending in the end of uh, by the end of June. And then I would borrow for those in September. And then the rest of the project, I imagine, would be done over the next many months, which means the balance of it, I would be borrowing the next September. Um, since we do have a number of things going off the um, off the debt exclusion rolls, I, I, this this one actually may never make it into a bond. We might be able to fit this into bands over the course of 10 years and not actually have to put them into a bond. And then um, and it would help, particularly if I'm able to pay it off at a on a quicker schedule, um, it might help make more room for the ladder truck and the DPW building when they when we need to borrow those funds. So 
there'll there'll be a little bit of a strategic planning if if we get the locker rooms going um that um that we might we might front load the payments on that so that we um don't have quite as a, a don't have the same kind of increase when the later expenses kick in i'm i'm just kind of thinking out loud but but yeah there's we have some options in there all right okay so the actual payment on this would be so the payment would be due uh yeah we're going to be on a september schedule yeah. with these so okay. we just did our september payment which would be new, done uh due in 25 whatever we borrow as a year from now is only going to be what was spent by the end of june so it's probably be fairly won't be the full amount i don't think we'll and then later. then we pay it in 26 right and okay. the balance the, the larger part will be probably borrowed in september 26 we because we will have paid it uh yeah and for payment for paying beginning in 27. all right well, that helps anyone else I just want to under, underscore, please don't hear anything that I said is indicating that there's any less of a need for the locker rooms. I appreciate Chris told me, Linda, that you spoke about the fact that you were on the school council when this was being talked about <laughs> decades ago. Yeah. Anyone who's yeah. been in our locker rooms can yeah. certainly attest to the fact that they are in desperate need of renovation. I'm just letting you know that on Tuesday, the school next Tuesday, the school committee will be just, we just want to make sure, I think also to Paul's point earlier about when we're yeah. looking at these projects, we want to make sure that taxpayers are confident that we're being really thoughtful and thinking ahead and doing things in a way that um, that makes sure that we, we don't do something and have to undo it. So we're just going to make sure that all these things are kind of connected and we're thinking through everything before we plow full steam ahead, but we absolutely need to renovate the lot. I, I think there'll be a lot of appreciation for the needs for the locker rooms. I wouldn't be surprised to see someone get up and say, I, I showered in them and my kids did, and now my grandkids are, are heading into them and they needed it when I was there. So <laughs> but, uh, I wasn't one of those. I'm not, I didn't grow, I didn't go to Hopkins, but I have certainly uh, been around uh, for a while when this is, I've been identified as a top need for quite a while. So I think people will be happy to get this taken care of. Hope so. Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate the information. All right, I think we did everything but the uh, audio visual equipment, the computers. And that's coming out of the enterprise fund. Correct. Yeah. Any questions on that for uh, Alex? I think we discussed it last week. It's pretty straightforward. Right. And um, if we could just go back to the cruiser, the reason it's still on here, I just want sort of general support. As I said, it's like the computers that the Capital Committee agrees that if you're going to have a capital item at this amount and we're going to fund it year after year after year after year that is virtually an operational expense and that you would support those two items going into the budget. I personally, I don't have any problem with that. And I don't know, David and Bill, how do you feel about that? I'm listening more than anything else <laughs> being new on it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I know that typically vehicles go in capital, but when we're buying a new vehicle literally every year, like clockwork, it seems like something that would just, just go in the budget and kind of streamline the process. Same with the computers, too. Seems that way. So we should probably take a formal vote on that. I'd entertain a motion that we uh, approve moving the uh, annual purchase of a cruiser and the uh, computers from the capital budget to the operating respective operating budgets. So moved. There's a second. Second. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That's fine. We'll, we're all in favor of doing that, Linda and Carolyn. Okay. Was that the cruiser and the computers? Did you, was that one motion? Yes. You covered both? Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you all. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, now we discussed, uh, we went over everything other than, uh, why don't we take a vote if the other members wouldn't object? To, uh, why don't we do everything at once unless someone has a strong objection other than the uh, $3 million for the DPW preliminary cost, which we will be deferring until next week. Does that sound okay? Bill and David? Yeah. Okay. And Linda and Carolyn, do you have any comments regarding that? Can Can we do uh, one by one? Would that be too much trouble? Sure, if you wanna do one by one, we can do that too. All right, well, let's start with the uh, communications equipment, the $60,000. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the computers are for dispatch are approved. Now the next item is the $100,000 for the Algonquin project. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the Algonquin project is approved. We're skipping over the DPW building preliminary design cost. And now we're moving on to the ladder truck, $2,150,000. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, no. Okay, so, uh, okay. As uh, chair, I will cast a deciding vote. I will vote aye. Okay, replacement cruisers. We moved them out, so I'm wondering, should we even... We already voted to move them into the operating budget. So I guess we wouldn't even have to act on that. Linda and Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think you don't have to vote on that. You're, you're set on that now. Good. Okay. Locker rooms are $1,069,531. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. That's Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Hopkins Academy locker rooms pass. IT equipment is, the 20,000 is gone, but we'd still have to vote on the 20 from uh, free cash, correct? Correct. The server, so. I'd entertain a motion for $20,000 from free cash for IT requirements for this year. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Media equipment, $21,426. Do we have a motion to approve? That's coming from the Enterprise Fund. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the motion passes and that takes care of all our business for today. Next week, we'll be meeting again at three o'clock, at two o'clock to discuss the $3 million DPW proposal. So I will entertain a motion 
Or is there any other business that wants to discuss? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.